This video is intended for applicable members of Task Force Trauma. If you are not a member, join from the link in the description below. Qualifications are available to TFT members with the minimum rank of Private First Class. Qualifications open supplementary capabilities for any role. Current quals available are disposable launchers, squad drones, explosives, and heavy weapons. To receive a qualification, hop on the IVAS training module, follow these upcoming tutorials, and contact an NCO to oversee your performance after you feel sufficiently practiced. The NCO can deny your qualification attempt if performance is subpar. Disposable launchers are characterized by their simplicity of operation. These weapon systems are valuable force multipliers, providing infantry with a lightweight, portable, and effective solution to countering armored or aerial threats. They are designed to be discarded after a single use, eliminating the need for reloading. This feature makes them particularly suitable for situations where rapid deployment is necessary. There are several different types of disposable launchers that you may have access to throughout your TFT journey. The first series of launchers that I want to talk about are Eastern Disposable Light Anti-Tank. Eastern launchers all operate exactly the same regardless of their mod. All you need to do is rotate squirrel wheel and hit spacebar to deploy and there are no priming mechanisms to operating Eastern LAT. I just simply pull this thing out and I'm ready to rock. Before you fire, gather the adequate range of your target. This vehicle is within 150 meters of my position. If I aim down sights and push page up, page down, you'll see that I can alter my iron sights slightly, but I cannot range for 150 meters. Since my standard range is just 100 meters, I'm going to aim my sights at the top of the vehicle to counter the low velocity of this weapon system. So now that I have my target acquired, range acquired, etc., I'm gonna hold my Alt key look over my shoulder both times and shout out clear back blast once anybody that is possibly within your back blast range is outside of it you also want to make sure that there isn't any type of obstruction behind you such as a vehicle a tree a rock etc now that you know that you're safe you'll gather your target and then you'll shout out rocket and then fire rocket to discard your expended LAT, rotate scroll wheel, pull out your primary weapon system, then you will dump it to the side automatically. Using Western LAT is very similar to Eastern, but there are two differences. One, you need to prime them before use, and two, the optics are far superior. So you deploy them the exact same way by rotating scroll wheel and hitting spacebar. Now we need to prime them by pushing R as in Romeo. Your optics are superior by allowing you to range them. And just like before, you gather your target, you find the range, you clear your back blast, and you shout rocket before firing. So this hostile IAV is within 250 meters. So I will range my optic for 250 meters, gather my target, clear my back blast, rocket! I would like to briefly talk about where to aim on a vehicle when engaging with the LAT. Just to point out what we're looking at here, this V-shape is the front of the vehicle, the V-shape hull. This trapezoid looking thing is the turret, this tube is the gun, and the square is the body. Whenever engaging a vehicle, you always want to try to get your shots as flat against the armor as possible. For example, if you are up above the target, you want to be firing down onto a flat surface that is at your angle. Just like how if I was at the rear of the target, I'd want to be firing like so. And there are many other options that are available to you, such as destroying the engine of the vehicle, destroying a track or its wheels, destroying its gun, rendering its weapon systems useless, or even hitting its troop compartment, which is generally at the back of the vehicle, and slaughtering the infantry that is embarked inside. Most vehicles in TFT have their ammunition cached right below their turret. So if you engage a target within this zone here, it will often result in a catastrophic explosion. Keep in mind that a vehicle doesn't need to explode in order to be destroyed. If the crewmen inside are dead from fragmentation, spalling, etc., or if the vehicle is otherwise disabled, that counts as a kill, and if it's rendered useless, go ahead and move on even without that catastrophic explosion. Some Western factions have access to the n -Log, which is a guided light anti-tank weapon. To deploy, rotate scroll wheel and press spacebar. Make sure your back blast is clear. And to use its tracking capabilities, first, you need to choose a direction of attack by holding left control and pressing tab. You're able to choose between a top-down or direct attack. I recommend using top-down. Next, gather your target, push T's and Tango to laser range, and then hold T's and Tango to track. You want to hold it for about three seconds, and then fire. Rocket! The NLOS top-down capability also allows the missile to hit its target even when behind cover. Infrared missiles will auto-track their targets, and once you hear the beep-beep, you are good to fire. Firing! 
A squadron operator is responsible for controlling various types of lightweight unmanned vehicles. Squadrons enhance unit situational awareness, facilitate safe reconnaissance capabilities, provide logistical support depending on platform, and can conduct targeted strikes against enemy positions with dedicated armament. Coordinating with the platoon is essential to effectively integrate these systems into broader tactical plans. The first thing you will need is a UAV terminal. To access your terminal, rotate scroll wheel and hit spacebar. If you know the specific position of a drone you are controlling, you can simply right click on it and hit connect. Otherwise, you can go to the top left of your screen, hit the drop down, and select from the list. Squadron operators are able to use the Pelter, Pelican, Darter, Bustard, and the IED UAV. If you're a medic, you are able to use the UGV Stomper and the Pelican Medical. The first thing we're going to cover is how to use the UAV terminal. Once a drone is selected, you can disengage their lights and autonomous behavior. Autonomous allows them to function without your input. As for lights, you usually always want this off. In the top right of your screen, you'll see that there are two options with this drone specifically, the driver and gunner positions. The driver position is exactly as stated. It allows you to drive the drone. You can change to the turret position by rotating scroll wheel and hitting spacebar. If you have autonomous engaged, you can hold shift and left click to order the drone to move to a position. If you right click on the arrow, it'll give you all sorts of different types of options, such as what the drone is going to do, its rules of engagement, and its altitude. Maybe you need to scan a target while the drone is moving. Hold shift, left click, go to the gunner cam, would you look at that? To go over some basic drone controls, Shift is up, Zulu is down, X-Ray is auto hover. You can rotate your scroll wheel and hit spacebar to disengage auto hover and its engines in case you want to do it that way as well. E and Q is to rotate left and right, and WASD is your general movement. Keep in mind that drones are usually extremely sensitive and you can very easily accidentally overshoot something and crash. While within first person, you can push plus and minus on your number pad to zoom in and out its camera. Furthermore, you can push N as in November to engage thermal and night vision settings. Left and right bracket keys allow Allow you to engage a GPS and radar. The Pelter is a small UGV equipped with a shotgun. The Pelican is a quadcopter UAV equipped with a storage compartment for resupply. The Pelican Medical is the same thing, just equipped with medical items. The Darter is a recon drone and laser designator. The Bustard is a machine gun drone used for quick and easy overwatch. The Stomper Medical, used by medics only, carries medical items and can also evacuate casualties. The IED UAV is equipped with small mortars that can be dropped on enemy positions. To operate the Pelter, go to the gunner control. Within the gunner control, you are able to move as if you were within the driver control panel. You can use your mouse to rotate your camera around. You can also hit E and Q to raise and lower your gun. If you push page up and page down, that will extend and retract your boom. F as in Foxtrot cycles between slugs and buckshot. These guys are very useful for mine detection and destroying enemy morale. The Pelican operates just like with UAV controls that I have already established. The only difference is this guy doesn't have a dedicated targeting camera. All it's used for is simply traveling to a location where friendlies are present, landing next to them for them to resupply. You can do this manually by flying it yourself, but I recommend using its autonomous features to move to your friendly position and then land it manually. Now that it has arrived, I'm going to land it by engaging auto hover and holding Zulu. Rotate scroll wheel to disengage its engines, and push spacebar to resupply. The medical pelican operates the same way, just transporting medical items. The darter's flight mechanics are exactly as previously mentioned, but I like to use the darter in a couple special ways, such as forcing it to follow me specifically. Within its camera, if you push plus and minus on your number pad, you are able to zoom in and out your camera. If you hit T as in Tango, it will range whatever target you are pointing at. If you left click, that will enable its laser designator. Only enable this for situational needs. N as in November cycles between thermal and night vision. And if you push Control Tango on a target, you are able to track that target. Maybe I am in a squad formation and I want to use this drone to monitor my squad. Now that I have the camera locked to myself, I'm going to zoom it to its minimum magnification. I'm going to release UF controls. If you hit your left or right bracket key, you can engage your drone camera. So if you see there, it will follow me around regardless of how I move. It even functions if you have thermals activated. The Bustard's flight and camera controls operate identically to the darter. The only difference is this one is equipped with a machine gun. To engage with the machine gun, push F as in Foxtrot, hit T's in Tango to range, and then fire. The Bustard is an extremely lethal piece of equipment. The UGV Stomper drives exactly like ground vehicles, except it is carrying medical supplies and is able to pull casualties out of the fight, being used as a medical evacuation vehicle. To use the UGV Stomper, simply connect to it, grab the driver control panel, and move it to wherever the casualty is located. Radio to whoever is in charge of the casualty for them to load the casualty into the vehicle. Once the casualty is loaded, simply pull the vehicle back to the nearest fob. Keep in mind that friendlies are able to resupply medical items from this vehicle. Lastly is the IED UAV. This drone operates extremely simply. Flies just like the darter, but it has a little crosshair there at the bottom of your screen. 
Wherever that crosshair lands when you hit your left click is where you will deploy one of its mortar rounds. I recommend using the explosives qualification to rig this thing with C4, so after its payload is discharged, crash it into its next target and detonate. Here's an example of using its mortars. The Explosive Squall certifies TFT members in general purpose and defensive explosive devices. You will need a large backpack, one of each device. The SM320 is tripwire flares for exposing enemy positions at night. The anti-personnel tripwire is exactly as stated. It's a tripwire landmine, most commonly used in doorways of buildings. The M4A1 slam is used to pop tires or tracks of vehicles. The Claymore is anti-personnel that is lethal within 15 meters. The M15 anti-tank mine is exactly as stated. It is an anti-tank mine. The M1112 demolition block is C4 explosive. Explosives. You attach it to an item, general purpose explosive, and it goes boom. And the Apers Mine Dispenser is a device that dispenses a small minefield. Next, you will need a mine detector, M152 firing device, and defusal kit. First, let's talk about deploying explosives. Self-interact, go to explosives, go to place, and then place the device you intend. Now, global interact with the device and select the trigger. To employ the firing mechanism, self-interact, go to explosives, go to the mechanism, and hit detonate either the explosive code or all. To activate your mine detector, if using the IVAS system, hit your left bracket key. Hit T's and Tango to spot mines. Note that that is only available for modernized factions. If playing as a legacy faction and you are equipped with a traditional mine detector, self-interact, go to equipment, to activate. Beep boop means bad, but as a legacy faction, you will not be able to spot landmines like you are seeing right now. So if there's a beep boop, avoid it. To defuse a mine, global interact. All other explosives activate exactly the same as what was shown. The heavy weapons qual confirms basic knowledge of static crew-served weapon systems, featuring heavy machine guns, mortars, automatic grenade launchers, and more. These capabilities are most commonly utilized at forward operating bases to ensure strong defenses. To deploy a heavy weapon, access the nearest arsenal and go to the backpack section. You will need two different backpacks, such as the gun and the tripod. I recommend grabbing the tripod first, Moving it to a location, dropping it, then grabbing the gun. After you have the gun, move back to your tripod location, rotate scroll wheel, and hit spacebar to assemble. From this point, you can global interact to move it. Rotate scroll wheel and hit spacebar to get inside the gun. Fully automatic grenade launchers are designed to suppress enemy infantry. Heavy machine guns are designed to engage light armored vehicles or heavy foliage. Anti-tank and anti-air missile systems do exactly as you would expect, but the last thing that we're going to talk about are mortars. Mortars deploy exactly how we just deployed this heavy weapon by going to our arsenal, backpack section, grabbing the bipod first, placing, going back to the arsenal and grabbing the tube, rotate scroll wheel, spacebar, and now that you are inside the mortar tube, you rotate scroll wheel and hit spacebar on artillery computer. Within the artillery computer, it'll tell you a minimum and maximum range. For example, outside the outer circle, I cannot fire because I am out of range. Within that circle, you are in range. But if you are within the inner circle, you are within your minimum range, so you're unable to fire. Be outside the minimum circle and inside the outer circle. In order to operate the mortar, you need to thoroughly understand TFT's map system, video linked in the top right of the screen. Within that video, you will learn about how to read grids and our numpad system. To conduct a fire mission, somebody will call a grid and numpad. You will then find the grid, find the numpad, and then fire however many rounds and what type of rounds they desire. Once you have the location spotted, click on it, hit a drop down for the type of shells you are ordered to use, and fire however many that are requested. Once those rounds are out, radio to the individual and tell them the estimated time of when those mortars are going to land. Good luck with your qualification attempts. See you soon.